but for now, um, I've proved my theory. Okay, so Sean always says cut grass, but out here it's uh, cut crab grass, clover, cut dandelions, cut weeds, Bermuda fescue, spring onions, wild garlic. I uh, got a six iron, par five, no way I make it home in two. Uh, just gonna send it with a uh, hydraw. So not as many options here. You can't see it, but there's tree ranches all above me. Let's see what I got. Got 107. It's going downhill and it's going that way. It's gonna make for an awkward stance and an awkward lie. I'm gonna have to keep it fairly low. And the front of the green uh, is really wet. But running it up's not a bad idea. A low pitching wedge. wanted and a little right and a little long but shouldn't be too miserable we'll see I'm gonna put this hey I'll take that part all day Definitely not my best and not my best result. I'm behind this tree and these leaves and debris with roots and rocks. Man, that's fantastic. That's great. So one big burning question I've had is, does practicing indoors into a net actually help to improve your game and your ball striking without actually seeing ball flights and results? And the answer is yes. was well struck. That was the shape I wanted. I just started a little too far right and I heard it hit this tree really solid. So it's really going to cost me some distance but if that hadn't been interfered with that was definitely longer more powerful than my old driver for sure. This is the big tree that it hit. It hit this tree about 40 feet in the air from what I could see and it hit the trunk solid. Bounce back to here. If that had not hit that tree, I hate to think how close I'd be to this green. Um, you know, it, not, not close in the sense that it's just a little chip, but definitely a lot closer than I normally am. So uh, that, that was well struck. Now I've got to punch a draw seven iron around this tree. baby that is perfect my god my ball striking has improved immensely 
over the last couple of weeks. Legit birdie. Uphill, right to left. This is a par three. I'm gonna shoot this yardage. These kind of holes, I don't know about you, but these, these get me in trouble sometimes. They're wide open. You could literally play any kind of shot you wanted to down there. You could draw it, you could fade it, you could hit it low, you could hit it high, you could do whatever you wanted to do. And sometimes too many choices and just thinking I'm gonna hit it over there straight is not really, for me sometimes that leaves too much uh, unsettled. So I'm going to shoot this yardage and figure out a club and a shot shape and I'm going to try and make that shot shape happen through my setup and delivering into that picture and visualizing it so that I'm committed to something specific. 145. The green is below where I'm standing right now a little bit. It is windy. Very windy. And it's wide open. So anything I hit is going to be exposed to the wind a lot. The lower I can play this ball, the better. And for me, the low fade is not the easiest shot to hit. The low draw fits my feelings and my thoughts and my, my swing better. So I want to play a low draw. Uh, I don't intend on it to have a whole lot of run even though I'm playing a low draw because there's a false front on the screen. There's also a bunker on the front right. So 144 into the wind. I could play an 8-iron here, but I think I'm going to go with a smooth 7 and just make it sort of a 3-quarter swing. Now, I don't want to think 3-quarter swing. I just want to think, you know, a shorter 7-iron and and honestly, I just want to feel the shot. I want to make the club go whatever yardage I desire it to go. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit a low draw with a 7-iron. I want to feel that setup. And I want to feel where that low 7-iron draw is going to be. And it feels about like that. I'm going to start it. On the left edge of that divot. It was low, just like I wanted. It started on the exact line that I wanted, but it stayed straight. It did not draw any. Do I feel like I made a bad swing? Not really. It wasn't that bad. Did I throw into the picture? I probably could have thrown a little bit better into the picture, but it wasn't bad. I think I might be in that bunker in the front right. Yeah, front right bunker. This is, uh, this is a tough shot for me. You're up against the lip a little bit. You gotta get it up with a little bit of force, but then you gotta stop it fairly quick. Now, this is a difficult shot for me, but I'm going to try and think through this and I'm going to try and apply what I've learned to this. Now, you're still going to use your legs and the heave and the toss. That's going to be important. And normally when I think of a bunker shot, I don't think about the ball contact at all because most of the time you're not contacting the ball. What I think about is splashing the sand at my target area. Forget the ball. Throw the sand up there. Your objective is to throw the sand up there. So, let me try. It's a good lie. It's just up against this lip. I probably want to land this about six or eight feet short. I don't want to run the risk of going over. So, if I was going to throw sand, you know, about like that. 
club. I think that's too much. I think that's just right. It's not the greatest result in the world, but it's out. I just needed a little more force. I need, or not force, but I needed to throw it further. That's all. But I'm on the green and I've got an uphill putt to try and save par. Try and really simplify this driver swing. Wow, that's fantastic. That is simply phenomenal for me. What I meant by simplify the driver swing was this I was trying too hard. I was trying too hard, I was over swinging. And I took too much backswing and I got out of position and then you know it makes it more difficult for me to throw the club down the fairway into the picture so I was shooting myself in the foot and what I meant by simplify was just to take it back like it was an iron I'm not going for distance uh, I'm going for throwing it into the picture I don't need to throw it supremely hard into the picture just throw it into the picture the club will do the work Par three, 115, up the hill. Uh, I've got a 50 degree in hand, my utility wedge. I think that's on. On the green, pretty much. You know, I've had so many challenges to face today. I've got a new driver. I took the four and five out of my bag. I put different wedges in my bag that, honestly, we had some arguments on the front nine about. I've got a new swing that I haven't tested on course, and my first time out uh, using that swing is now. It's cold. It's been really windy all day long, and I haven't played in about two months. It's really wet. It's muddy. It's soggy. Uh, I, I don't know what else I could have had stacking the deck against me today to come out here and play well. But the ball striking, the ball striking has really come around. I just hit a drive back there that was definitely 20, 30 yards past where I normally am. I've done that several times. Um, if there's ever a question as to whether or not indoor practice to try and groove a swing, and get it down to where you could come out and play instinctive golf and not have to worry about mechanics. If there's ever any question if that's possible or not, for me at least, I've put that question to bed, for sure. Uh, I had so much stacked against me today, and to come out here and to strike the ball this well, this often, um, I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled, but for now, um, I've proved my theory. <laughs>